Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the week ahead. Now I'm really excited for this week ahead in particular because yesterday was the new moon in the sign of Capricorn and this morning, as you guys know, I like to take some time to kind of like you know, enter into my like meditation zone and, you know, connect with my intuition, connect with my guides and ask them for messages to come through. And when I tell you they came through this morning, I mean, they always do, but I just feel like even though it doesn't fit for me right now, it feels like on an energetic level, um, I resonate with it. Like the message resonates with me and I feel like it's where we're going. It's where we're headed. And just seeing this, it makes me feel like the power is falling more into our hands now more than ever. Now, when I say that, I mean it's the message that came through and in alignment with the cards that I pulled. And the three cards, there's three cards that jumped out and the first one was, the first one was the lover's card and the second one was the chariot and then I shuffled, shuffled a little bit more for additional clarity, for additional confirmation and insight and then the star card jumped out. And, you know, when I see the starred card, a part of me kind of like pushes it aside and focuses on the others because I always feel like the starred card is that additional layer. Um, even though it's a major arcana, arcana card, um, I just, I never really, not that I don't take it seriously, but I don't dive into it as much as maybe I should because I just look at it as, you know what, no matter what it is that we're going through right now, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose. It may not make sense to us, but it's there. It's there. And if you keep your eyes on the prize, if you keep your eyes on what is the end result, what is the end goal, that's all you need to do in order to continue to move forward. Now, when I see the chariot and when I see the lovers, this is when I'm like, you know, my eyes are really opened and I'm, you know, I'm really open to listening to what their message is, especially when it comes to movement. Now, with the lover's card, and when I look at the chart for the week ahead, which I will talk about, of course, but when I look at the chart, the, the lover's card, this is so much about, the first thing that I think of is this crossroads. And this really applies to me right now because not this past drum circle, but the drum circle before that, I'm pretty sure, I think it was around Kwanzaa, and one of the main women that leads the circle for our jump circle was talking about being at the crossroads, being at a point in your life where you have to make a decision. And even as, as I'm saying this now, I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. But it, you know, her saying that, you know, you have to, you're at that point, and it's not just the new year. It has a lot to do with the new year, but it also, more than that, has to do with what's going on with divine timing and what's going on in the stars and the cosmos. But we're at this point in our lives where we have to make a major decision, a major choice. And that choice should only come from what is authentic and what is good for you right now and what's to come. It shouldn't be based upon the decisions of the past because those things have already happened. You've learned those lessons. Now you really have to decide, okay, knowing all that this has happened, knowing that all of this happened and you know, this was my experience for good or for bad, this is where I am now. And moving forward, I now have the power in my hands to make an executive decision based upon what my future is going to look like. And that's the thing with the lover's card is that most people, especially with beginner tarot, you look at the lover's card and you're like, you know, this is two things coming together, this is unity. And that is true, but you also have to remember that the tarot works with metaphors and symbolism and what does that mean for you? Yes, it could be unity, but unity with what? Another person, unity with yourself, unity with your purpose. What is it that you are joining forces with? And when you finally make that decision, when you make that decision or you're faced with that decision, the only way to the best way in order to make the right decision for you is two aspects, to look at the two aspects within yourself. And that is to approach something from the human form and then the spiritual form. And I'll talk to you guys about that in a second. So if you look at the lover's card and we have studied within the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which is the tarot school that I run, a private exclusive group, um, that I created for those who want to intensively study the tarot. But if you look at the lover's card, you will see that there are two people coming together, at least in the Rider Waite. <clears throat> this is the first major um, arcana card that actually shows like these, you know, these the energy of like masculine and energy coming together outside of the high priestess. 
And that's really important and significant because it's showing like the dualities. It's showing like how we need each other, masculine and feminine. That doesn't mean man chooses woman or woman chooses men and that excludes you know, feminine and feminine coming together. It's, <clears throat> or masculine and masculine coming together in a relationship. It's just talking about energetic energy wise, masculine energy and feminine energy, energy that gives, energy that receives. And that's what it is that we're talking about. But when you look at the lover's card, there's this angel that comes like, you know, to the forefront and it's a call, a call for you to, to, to make a decision now. And you have the male form that looks to the female form and he represents you know, being pulled by what you desire, what you are attracted to, the logical mind, the logical part of your brain, and also the common sense side of your brain. And then the feminine is not looking towards the man, she's looking to the divine, she's looking at the angel, because she represents receptive, being able to receive the message, and then also receiving that message from divine energy, her intuition and also her feelings. So the two of them together, one isn't better than the other, but they work together to move forward. So when you are at this crossroads, and put a pin in movement, because remember the chariot. So when we're at this crossroads, you are heeding this, this call from the divine, from the angels, or from this messenger, or maybe this signal. You're starting to get a lot of signs in your life right now. And you have to make a decision. What is for me? What is for my best, for my highest and greatest good? That's what I need to do. And this is merging all of those aspects. It's not enough to you know, only operate from the logic or only operate from common sense or only operate from intuition and only operate from feeling because that's not balanced. You have to factor in all of the things and then make a decision based upon that. And once you make that decision, there honestly is no turning back. You can't pull everything with you and say, well, I want a little bit of this, I want a little bit of this. If you want a healthy lifestyle, you can't encourage unhealthy behaviors because it's no longer a healthy lifestyle. You have to choose one or the other. And let's say if you want a relationship, you're kind of stuck in between picking two different partners or three different partners or someone's giving you an ultimatum because yesterday was just the solar eclipse. It was a solar eclipse on Capricorn. So not only you, but others are under the same influence of, I'm serious right now. You know, where do you stand? What do you want? This is who I'm about. This is what I want to build. This is what I want my life to look like. Career, relationships, health, whatever that goal is, fill in the blank. So it's not just you that's under this influence, it's everyone else. And you're being called in this moment to think about the future, to think about what's to come. Sorry about that, baby loves. <laughs> my neighbor came home and then I just get camera shy, so I like ran inside the house introverts united anyways so when the lover's card appears this is really again you having to make a choice and that's the major thing about the lovers that i really want you guys to to be aware of is that at some point in your life it, whether it be again career or life like maybe moving to a, a, a different location maybe the universe is telling you like you either stay here or you stay here but you can't do both because it's physically impossible you can't split yourself in two and live both of these different worlds so the way to do that is to the way to make this decision is by going back to the lover's card and going back to merging what you what your actual physical goals are the masculine side of you that understands that this is what i want these are the desires of my heart. These are the desires of, you know, my mind and even my flesh a little bit because this is what I want to experience because if you diminish that, if you ignore that, if you push that away, that's you're diminishing a really important aspect of you as a human being. And um and then they'll inevitably reveal themselves because at the end of the day, you're you know, you're still human, if that makes any sense. So it's really important to honor those feelings, even though society or whatever is saying that it might be wrong for you or it's not what you should do. And I think that that's one of, one of the reasons why the word authenticity and choice came through this morning and for this week. Because when you are authentic with yourself, what it really means is that you are being honest with yourself and then revealing that that true version of yourself with others, sharing that with others, or maybe not sharing it with others, but saying that this is who I am, this is who, what I want. I'm not trying to put up a front. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to pretend like this feeling doesn't exist. I'm not trying to pretend like this isn't something that I desire or that I want to attract into my life. This is what I want. I'm not gonna lie to myself and be like, yeah, you know what, you don't really want this. Well, realistically, I am attracted to it. Realistically, I do desire it. So being 
authentic with that being honest with that and moving from that space and then also realizing does what you want does it match your long-term goals does it match what it is that you want to build towards and having balance with that the, the one thing that I will say is that today, Monday, Venus moves into the sign of Sagittarius. Venus, again, is the things that we're attracted to, beauty, the things that we love, the things that we value. And Sagittarius is the, the sign that really wants to kind of go out and explore and see different things. And this could be money, so this could be people kind of branching out and trying to connect with different groups, different cultures, different lifestyles or whatever, or different friends, getting out and exploring in order for you to connect and to build. And why, why connect and build? Because most of the personal planets right now are falling in the sign of Capricorn, and Capricorn is all about you know, building in long-term and longevity. So even though it may seem like it's not you know, important or significant, it truly is because what you're doing is you're making alliances, you're making connections. So in relationships, let's say you're in a relationship, um, an intimate relationship, um, this is also being able to connect with your partner and to enjoy and to prioritize the pleasure in, in that you know life can give to you and, and the things that you want to incorporate into your relationship that include fun and exploration and maybe even freedom, a sense of freedom. Because as Saturn, as the Saturn energy with Capricorn is here, a lot of this is feeling confinement for some of you guys. And when you start feeling like, you know what, this is too much of a heavy responsibility or too much of a burden, even as I'm talking to you and I'm telling you guys, what is it that you commit yourself to? If during this process you realize that the commitment that you're facing is too much, it's too heavy, it's not something that you want, don't feel bad because I've been talking like, what are you committing yourself to? Like, what is it that you desire? What is it that you're gonna dedicate yourself to? Because what's really happening is, is that you're authentically realizing that I don't want to carry this commitment. I don't want to carry this burden. So instead of you forcing it and then later on dropping the ball, it's you realizing that this is not what it is that I want. So if during this process, this evaluation, that you realize like I don't, you know, this is too heavy, this is not what I want, and you have to put it down, you have to set it down, that's you, you being honest with your authentic self and realizing that this commitment needs to be broken off. Um, and of course, I'm also have been kind of watching and, and witnessing with my clients and then within the charts and with the cards that I've been pulling for my clients, this energy of destruction, but things being kind of co-created or things being created based upon the things that it is that we release. And that's just the energy of, you know, this time of time of year in general, a lot of things get kind of broken down. This is the energy of Saturn and Pluto moving through the sign of Capricorn. Things are going to continue to be broken down. Um, we've been watching a lot, you know, 2017, 2018, and in 2019, we're going to see a lot of us mentioning the word release and our need to control and our need to let go. And this is because, again, Pluto and Saturn are moving through the sign of Capricorn and it's asking you, again, to release and let go of these things that you can't control, these, these things that you lock yourself into. Now, I do see some heavy triggering when it comes to Mercury well, the rest of this week, and this is because Mercury, the planet of communication in the mind, is going to be squaring off with Mars. And this creates like this irritability, this sense of irritation. And... Then on the 11th, the sun ruling our ego, meaning like how we identify ourselves, how we view ourselves, and where our focus is being highlighted, meets up with Pluto, the planet of death, destruction, transformation, and control, power, possessive, like the ability to possess. And what happens is that this surges that frustration, like again, in a way, uh, in a good way, this is again you tapping into this is what I want, this is what I don't want, this is what I accept, this is what I won't accept, this is who I am, and this is you asserting yourself or you receiving someone asserting themselves, and then the honesty of that, the truth of that, and then from there you make power moves, meaning like you're either with me or you're I'm leaving you behind. So that's the energy of what Sun conjunct Pluto is, but then also this can trigger a lot of sensitive feelings of people who may also be feeling powerless when certain aspects of their lives are being broken down. And again, all of this is kind of pushed because on the 6th we had that new moon in the sign of Capricorn, which is not typically emotional, but it has been triggering, triggering a lot of emotional reactions. Now, I want to bring up, and this is the last thing for the most part that I'll say, I want to bring up the, the message of the chariot. And why it probably showed up and why, like what it is that I'm getting 
but I also want you guys to stay open to see what this is going to look like for you. But with the chariot, you know, it does sig signify movement. It does signify, you know, moving forward. And that's the crazy thing is that it doesn't always seem like it is that you're moving forward because the visualization that I got with this is a person who's sitting on a train. I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen before, but when you're sitting on a train and the train is still or there's a train on the opposite side, like a train parked right next to you, and it starts to move, it seems like you're moving, but you're really not. So kind of reverse that. It almost seems like you're not moving, but you, you actually are. It's like an optical illusion. And because some things, this movement can almost be a little bit out of your control, maybe you are physically forced to travel, or maybe for work or whatever, or maybe life is telling you to go forward. It's time to move forward, whether you like it or not, or whether you're comfortable or whether you're not comfortable. Um, you're, you need to move. You need to get up. You need to get going. You know, it's time for you to kind of take that step, you know what I mean? And so with the chariot, you, as emotional as you can be triggered, especially when you're faced with the lover's card kind of revealing itself and all the emotion that can come from that, with the chariot having emotional, you may be emotionally kind of messy, meaning like you might be, you know, releasing a lot or feeling confused or directionless, or maybe you feel really powerful. Maybe on the 11th, Sun conjunct Pluto surges this sense of empowerment within you, whatever it is. But just make sure that, again, when you sit with the lover's card and you are asking yourself, what do you, what do I want for myself? What do I want my life to look like? That your feelings, and we can't control them, but you can control your intention. And that's the message of the chariot, is it's the merging, again, masculine and feminine. It's shadow and light. It's black and white. Those things, those polar opposites coming together with one goal in mind, moving forward, moving direct. And now is the time to really control yourself. And if you have feelings of self-doubt, insecurity, I can't do this. That's the biggest thing that I want you guys to take from this too, is that many of you guys, you're stepping into unknown territory and it could be emotional, it could be you see the potential of something but it reminds you of something of the past and it's hard for you to you know, let go of that because it, you know, what, you remember what happened in the past and you just don't want it to repeat again in the future and I get it. But again, you have to have control of yourself and realize that those triggers, they don't necessarily represent reality now. You can learn from them, you can know not to repeat them, but also don't block yourself. Don't you know, wall yourself up and stop yourself from moving forward and stop yourself from receiving a blessing because you emotionally just can't get it together. You emotionally or mentally are believing the worst. You're allowing yourself to derail too much in the dark and too much into the light. Meaning like you're thinking so much of what can happen, good, you know, bad, really bad, or you're thinking so much, you have this big bubble of expectation of all the good that can happen. It's just this like balance of the two, which is I open up to this. I oh, this is my intention. This is what I want for myself. I'm not going to have a lot of anxiety or fear on this. I'm not going to have, you know, all this extra weight of expectation. It just is what it is. I'm going to move forward. This is what I want universe to provide. And I'll wait, just show me what I need to do. Tell me where I need to go and that's what I'll do. Anything that doesn't fit in with that, anything that doesn't feel good, I make the choice to let it go and that just becomes the fuel that I, those coals that I add to the fire to keep this train going. So it's like, I know that that's the most, you know, counter, like everyone else on the internet is saying almost the polar opposite, which is having this like hard extreme expectation or and then release, 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 let go. But, and then here I come on the internet and on YouTube or on our YouTube channel and I say, like, it's this nice little balance of control of both of the, the best of both of these worlds and just keeping control of that and really staying grounded. Why grounded? Well, because again, most of, a lot of the planets are moving through the sign of Capricorn. It's very Earth. So it wants to be grounded. That's the way to materialize is to not completely derail or lose track of where it is that you're going. And the chariot is all about control after you've made the decision, the lovers. So I hope that that makes sense, you guys. Um, 
Make sure that you're sub subscribed to my YouTube channel. Of course, you can receive and expect, that's what you can expect, um, weekly intuitive messages that are authentic, that are real, that come from me, from my guides, that I give to you on the daily. Of course, that's Bahati Life's motto, in service to others and the divine. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do. Make sure that you turn on the notifications so that you receive this message and direct, you know, perfect divine timing when you need to hear it. And um, also I wanted to remind you that every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I go live on my IG account, Bahati Life, and we talk about the week ahead. So if you wanna be a part of that community, realize that I'm screening everyone before I, you know, invite you guys or before I let you into our into our circle on Instagram. But you're more than welcome to join in on that if you're into interested in astrology intuition, authentic intuition, um, tarot, intuitive guidance, etc., etc. okay? So I'll see you in my next video. Until then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.